So um, I'm Joni, and um, I'm somebody who works here at the Children's Theater, and I just want to say thank you to all of you coming, and uh, especially thank you to the Firesign Theater, who has agreed to come in here and, and do this as a benefit for the Children's Theater. I just want to say one thing about the Firesign Theater, I'm getting hot up here, and that is, I think, the best quote about them, and I'm sure you've, you've heard this, but Library of Congress called them the Beatles of Comedy, and thank goodness they didn't break up, you know? So I'm really glad they're, they're here with us. They, they may be doing that right now. <laughs> Where are all the children? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Where were them? Kind of for the children. Okay. <laughs> Young in heart, I guess, is more like it. Okay. All right, we are, we are, we are, uh, here we are. So yes, you are. can, you can, this is your one chance are to get everybody to, on the same stage and, uh, and ask those questions yes. you've always do wanted to Do you wear contact ask. lenses? Yes. Yes. I do. <laughs> we once had a, I don't want to make anybody nervous, I'll put it in. <laughs> we once had a terrific sketch, what was it, where Phil loses his contact lens in the middle of the show? Oh, wasn't it the, we, oh God, what was that? Do we do it in do, danger sometimes? I don't remember. There was something out there. Yeah, you know. Is it all? Well, let's see. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I can see. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I missed the chair. We just, we've traditionally just assigned him the comedy stuff. The rest of the, the, rest of the intellectual thing. <laughs> Yeah, somebody has to be funny. It's a dirty <laughs> job. <laughs> okay, anybody. Because we, we can't, can't see, see you. you. So, uh, yell out. <laughs> this gentleman right here. What are you guys up to? What are we up to? <laughs> Three a day? <laughs> Two well, a night. Well, we, we have uh, committed ourselves because <laughs> other people have tried to commit it. Oh, that's much better. <laughs> We've committed ourselves to doing some touring. And <clears throat> since now, Three of the members, these guys, all live in your area, and I don't. I'm pretty much leaving it to them and just trying to make myself available when I am to, you know, participate. So they should talk about how they're how they're doing it. And we have we also have a, a colleague named Maureen Western, who's a Weston, who's been helping us put it together. Did so we, we've, we've got who's should is she should here? Be here she any is arriving at any moment. Uh, yeah, we're doing a show in, we're doing uh, two shows, uh, I mean this was, these were the two dates that were available when we did our show uh, in uh, Los Angeles. We did four at a small theater in LA. We, we had such a good time, we got back here and said, okay, what are the, uh, you, when can we play with? Well, well it, you started, it started in Monterey. Well, that's, that's it right. It started in Monterey. Monterey. <laughs> uh, a, a fellow named Warren Dewey has a beautiful theater. Uh, called the Golden State Theater, beautiful theater that he's restored there. And uh, he's a great pal of Fireson. He uh, had a studio in Santa Monica and actually produced our um, uh, Fools in Space show for XM Radio. So we had a long uh, and, and delightful history with Warren, and then he went up and took over this theater. So that was kind of what kicked off. Yeah, he off wanted us. He just he just wanted us to play this theater. So yep. we decided, okay, we will get together. Big, Let's do it. big old house, you know, Beautiful one of those big house. old houses. And uh, we had a great time there. It was a one-off show. It was very hard to get people to Monterey immediately after the economy had collapsed. <laughs> yeah, right. Traveling more than ten miles in California was it was over, you know, yeah. unless you had. You were furloughed from your job, in which case you couldn't afford to do it anyway. So, but we had a great time, and then we did the four dates at the Barnstall in uh, Los Angeles mm -hmm. in a small house, so that for the first time we didn't have to carry props, costumes, mm -hmm. and a whole lot of other things beyond our own uh, selves and the scripts we hold in our hands. And it was appropriate then to come here and try a, 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 an even slightly smaller house than the uh, L.A. house. Mm -hmm. But who wouldn't want to play Wicca because it's such a great little theater? I know for a fact that uh, a lot of you people have seen us perform in our larger shows. How, how many have seen us uh, do shows before? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And, and, you, and, and you've seen the big shows where we had costumes and lights and flash pots. Any of you? Yeah, flash pots. <laughs> and balloons. Our one effect. Although we had a balloon. Flash pot balloons. <laughs> <laughs> and you had an exploding hat. <laughs> Phil had an exploding hat as a, when we broke the president, which we rigged out of a 
uh, a hat that Jimmy Durante wore in what was it, Peter? It was a W.C. Fields copy I imitation, you know, imitation in, in a, the big parade or something yeah. like that, which I recently found in a trade magazine in L.A. had sold for thirty-one thousand dollars to How some collector. How did I have no idea. And we knew it was ours because it had been cut I around cut it the, the to, top. to rig it so that snakes and things would come out of the top. Well, we should, re we should re you know, put in a police report. <laughs> I wrote, I wrote to them about it, and I said, first of all, it's not W.C. Fields' hat. They had a picture of W.C. Fields, you know, and I said, it wasn't his hat, it was Jimmy Durante's. So we got him there, but of course, there's no silence. They've already collected the 31,000. They got the 31,000. Somebody got Here's two So to just wrap that up, we're looking for more hats. and more hats along the way. We're going to play Kirkland. Uh, 20, is it 23rd, 24? 22nd, 23rd. 22nd, 23rd, a Friday, Saturday, at the end of the month, and on Sunday we're going to go do two shows in Tacoma. So we're going to cover this area Friday, pretty, Saturday, pretty thoroughly. Yeah. The, really big, the really big thing about these shows that we're doing for Monterey on is that these are the first shows we've ever produced on our own. We've sure. never been small businessmen particularly, and, and now we are. And uh, this is the first time we've ever invested our own money, and done everything exactly the way we wanted. Everybody you see working on the show, Mo Taylor, who's here, uh, is uh, been in on the ground up and has created, Taylor, for instance, has created the sound design virtually by himself. I mean, oh, we're, yeah. the, we're the theoretical masters of sound. And he's Taylor Jessen, ladies he's and gentlemen. That's what we did. <laughs> He doesn't have to stand up because he's taller than all of us. <laughs> so that's a huge, uh, it's boring particularly that part of it, but for me that's the biggest fun to actually see us actually uh, combining uh, fart jokes and business <laughs> in, in these later years. It's, it's, it's turning out, it's doing really well. I mean, I can't believe how much money we can suddenly make doing this. Uh, after many years of working for promoters and all very nice and everything yeah. like that, but we just don't make anywhere near as much money as we do this way. And, and in this economy, that's a really good idea. And since we've mentioned Taylor, another aspect of what we, uh, Taylor has done for us as uh, archivist, he is the official Fireside Theater archivist, knows more about us than we know about ourselves. Or could possibly remember. Or could remember. <laughs> <laughs> or care about. Or, yeah, yeah. Or care about. <laughs> but uh, he has assembled over the last 10 years or so the entire archive of Fireside Theater Radio on the air from 1960. Mm -hmm. we, we got seven from 70 to 72. 70, 70, 72. 70 to 70. 70 hours worth of three improvisational radio shows we did. Dear friends, Fireside Theater Radio, Hour Hour, and Let's Eat. And, and he's got them and he's cleaned them up, and he's produced them, he's done the whole thing, archived them. They're ready to he's go. He's taken most of the humor out of it. So. <laughs> <laughs> the real, the real yeah. problem doesn't offend anybody. <laughs> real time. 63 of those hours is me shouting, hey, I'm Les Thompson, and here's another. <laughs> 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 so so the, people have listened to the, you know, you never listen to the thing. The wonderful thing about radio is you never have to hear it back again. Uh-huh. Yeah, right. yeah. 72 hours of radio facing us. But, but that's a, a, an amazing period in L.A. radio where you could really do anything. It started with Peter's uh, Radio Free Oz show in, in uh, 66. And uh, in 67, we haven't put together all of our shows yet from 1967. Can I, can I just but throw, you can throw to, to yeah, our sure. audience... Please spread the word. Um, there's a fire sign period that we dearly love, and we, which has been bootlegged extensively, uh, the Magic Mushroom shows. Oh, there are yeah. perhaps 12 of these half-hour, 20-minute programs. They are out there in the world. If there is to be a box set, and we really think there should, we are seeking the best surviving recordings of the Magic Mushroom show. So please go to firesigntheater.com and check out the Got Fireside window, or if you know someone who may have some stuff, point them there. That's where people can write to Fireside if they have home recordings. I still find it <coughs> quite amazing that we, we, we were so careless about uh, keeping track of all our stuff, you know. Uh, 
But well, it wasn't that we were so careless as that every one of those shows that we did was the reel of tape was stolen out of the collection of the shows. Really? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah we lost all of our performances. Stolen? We don't know who stole them. We don't know. <clears throat> They're probably going to be sold for $31,000. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like W.C. Fields, rare recording. <laughs> No, those aren't fires in theater. That's Jimmy Duran. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. He just my <laughs> but, uh, but of course, the, the, for those of you who, who perhaps don't know our history, that was the beginning of our uh, our working our comedy chops together, uh, inspired by the the style of the Goon shows. <laughs> and and uh, when Peter took his Radio Free Eye show into a live format at this wonderful club over there in uh, North Hollywood. Uh, it was before it was North Hollywood. It was just then no Hollywood. Uh, we, we would do these little half-hour comedy presentations as part of the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. And, and speaking of uh, Radio Free Oz, well, it's about to uh, appear again. So yeah. One question is elicited a lot That's of response. Right. What are you doing on the radio now? <laughs> Good question. Please. Well, um, Radio Free Oz. Uh, initially launched in Los Angeles in 1966 on uh, Pacifica Radio and at that time FM w was was an ex was an extraordinary experience to people who knew AM and FM at that time was all they were just playing nothing but dead Germans on the station and so along comes uh, Radio Free Oz and creates alternative radio it was a huge freeing experience and FM became free FM well now we have the same experience we have radio but now we have web radio and web radio is universal. It's always drive time somewhere on the net. It's available. It's 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 not subject to the FCC. That's not the issue in this case. And uh, I'm bringing Radio Free Oz back on the air. And sometime in February, I have to push it back. Maybe February 13th. And I'm operating out of um, radio station KWPA in Coopville. And the the. Uh, the studio is in the harbor master's office at the end of the <laughs> So if any boats start going in crowds, <laughs> Peter, could I, I could just call you on the telephone there in the studio. Oh yes, yeah, just go. No, no, they don't have a line. <laughs> you can I can use my iPhone. And, and, uh, you can't call, you can call me, you know, and uh, it's, it's uninsulated, so it's uninsulated radio, and it's, it's right there on Penn Cove, where, where the greatest muscles in the world, so it's all muscle radio, and the idea is it's They've already got $100,000 worth of advertising yeah, slogans right. out there, right. so they've been there two days. <laughs> well, it's, it's actually, it's peer-to-peer it's -peer radio. Oh. Oh. But it's not peerless because without oh, oh, peer, we're yeah, not yeah. responsible. So, all right, all right, all right. so the idea is, is that you'll be able to hear it too, hours live. You know, uh, either live stream if you're if you're there at ten o'clock Pacific Standard Time, wherever you are, wherever. You could be in the stream and yeah. listen to it because we will we'll try to create enough bandwidth so that a lot of people can listen to it live, and then of course you can stream it in archive or or download it and podcast it, and we think this is going to be a marvelous way you know, to get. The fire sign theaters, that special kind of humor back on the air. My idea of fun is working with these guys, and, and therefore any opportunity I can take to do it in any format, I will do it. Now, when would you be on the air, and when would, would we have to be in front of a machine? Of well, so uh, are we involved? I know. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask that question. That's what I wanted to know. I wanted to make sure it was real before I came forward, and I didn't even use your names to get on the air. I just, I just said the fire sign theater. I didn't say You just said several shellfish will appear. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, right. I was vision in, in, the, in the summer, you know, with the sun shining on Penn Cove. It's just absolutely beautiful. All these boats coming up and mooring around the edge right. of the pier. Well, no, well, actually, it's, it's the pier. The there's a, well, there's a walkway around it. So I'm sitting here. I'm about this far from the window. So tourists are going to go right by. <laughs> oh, yeah. And look in. It's got wonderful authenticity of Northern exposure. Yeah. Northern exposure. Yeah. So it, it'll be for those who are, you know, if we can get the guys live in, in, in the uh, Harbor Master 
We could just clam live radio. Up. We could just we'll, clam up. And not <laughs> like well, David, you know, we're, we both live on Whidbey, so I can always get him. But the, get everybody else. Everybody else by by you know. It'd be renamed. Yeah, yeah, by what? What do we have? By phone. By clamophone. What do we have? The iPhone. The iPhone. Well, you know, call by the iPhone. Multiple. Well, it's got a money hour. Skype. Yeah, Skype. We could. I have Skype suddenly, and the camera that you gave me works. Oh, it does. Doesn't it? Figure this out. Yeah, right. So it's going to be. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, We're going to put a lot of funny stuff down. Nice. That's yeah, great. sure. Yes, sure. There is Mr. Ishakwa. Mr. Austin. Yes. Forty years ago, you told an interviewer, "If you can laugh at something, it has no power over you." You still believe that? Yes, because it just sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah. It does. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to think about. It. Let's see. What is that? Power it's good, isn't it? I mean, it actually, good. when you really think back, when I really think back to, uh, which is too as far. Peter said, I can't go too far. Bad brain. Peter's right about uh, FM radio, freeform radio. What we actually came out of, what we actually how created. How God's name, we were created. These four odd people that, in in a sense, had never met each other four had it not even. been for the radio. Yeah. Uh, we came out of. Uh, we also came out of this odd period that we've all obviously, looking at our age, uh, went through, of turmoil and foment and revolution, etc. And God knows all those words come rushing back at you in that world. And obviously, I mean, that's what I'm talking about. I'm in there just blathering away. I'm 28 or 30 years old or whatever the hell I was, trying to talk about power, which is what. And then we would sit in writing sessions and try to work out the idea of power in terms of our work and all that, the grid and power and this and that. And, and it all got down to the feeling. Peter and I were both uh, incarcerated by the Army for a while. At that time? Yeah. At the time we were in the Army uh, Reserves. Everybody was running scared. Everybody, we, we as a beat generation were scared shitless. They yeah. called Beat the Reaper when the draft at Yale. Uh, in, in the alumni magazine, they used to have uh, this thing called Beat the Reaper, which was, when, you know, oh. picking numbers out of a hat. So, yeah. you know. yeah. so we, uh, we all tend to, uh, uh, on the, now that period of time, the period of time we all kind of rise out of, it is seen as kind of cutesy and charming, the way people look at the 50s now. And, you know, love, it, love are, all those adorable <laughs> hippies and all yeah. that stock and all this stuff. Girl. And everybody forgets the amount of fear and concern, particularly among intelligent people. It's quite true. Males, was, particularly amongst males. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, we were males. we were trying to sort of ride the ride right at the edge of commerciality and non-commerciality, and trying to make sense of of what the hell we thought about anything, and still try to make comedy records at the same time. Sure. Thanks, Cap. I, I hope that's a great answer. <laughs> yeah. Um, question for you guys. It has to do with like archiving and things. Um, I used to listen to uh, Mr. Bergman's show from Pacifica in Pittsburgh from a friend of mine who was blind, but he was into ham radio. So he had a ham friend in California hook up, you know, oh. and broadcast it uh -huh. by a ham wave to Pittsburgh so I could hear this and that was like our special time together. Really? And then he would run, he would roll a reel to reel, he would run a two track and roll reel on that. And when Do he you still have away, those? I wondered what happened to them, but I, all of the magnetic tape had just decomposed after a time and it just all flaked apart. Mm -hmm. And that's what broke my heart because I was hoping to get, I was yes. like, any anything that he has. I would have been honored to keep with me, but that was something that shows that, you know, that magnetic tape is not, you know, a permanent. Oh no. It's not, you know. And it turns every, out everything's permanent. No. Yeah, so yeah. All this digital <coughs> stuff is going to go yeah. 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 fairly quickly. All my airship everything. tapes and stuff yeah. are useless because they're flaking, you know, things like that. And it wasn't yeah. that long ago that I put right. Yeah, everything yeah. I did at NPR just yep. fallen off the plastic. Oh, I mean, it's yeah, on the just, floor. Yeah. That was bad tape, 80, 81, 82, yeah. 83, 84. ASF wasn't doing their job, you know. So. One, job. Mil, one mil tape. <laughs> one mil tape. <laughs> oh, yeah, if you didn't have a break on your Ampex, that one mil tape would go. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Wire recording. That's right. That's right. <laughs> what about all those horrible splices where you would be oh, yeah. 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 That was my scholarship <laughs> job when I was in Yale. Uh, I spliced a show called Yale Reports. Yeah. And, and with, down in the basement there, the audiovisual center. We didn't think it was hard work. I mean, we spliced it. We never sat there and said, God, no, was, I wish we didn't have to do all this creative, splicing. You know? it was, yeah. That was fun. That was no, magic. Yeah. It you was know? Cutting, cutting, 
cutting edge. Little pieces. And when we used to pro produce early on Radio Free Oz, before we actually got in Columbia Studios, uh, when I would do these these sound collages for yep. the top of the week, I remember once I had to put crickets behind someone, or maybe it was for the Indian show yeah. that we were doing. Oh, yeah. And we'd sit there with two guys with pencils with tape, like maybe 15 feet of tape in a loop going over the pencils through the thing as a continuous loop to be able to record one track that way. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, uh, yeah. Garage Band eat your heart out. It yeah. was just, yeah. Yeah. it was, but we didn't think that was strange. We thought that was great. We got the results. People loved it. The other people that were doing this were creating electronic music. Yeah, yeah. Luning and Ushachevsky yes. and all those guys. Yes, That's not the backwards. Yeah. And, and, and and it wasn't top. funny. No, that's not that's <laughs> funny. John Cage thought he was funny. They called it dry wit. Yeah, it was dry. Yeah, dry. Yeah, it was dry. Uh, Any questions? Where did you get the names of some of your albums? Don't crush the dwarf, hand me the fire. I well, I can drive. Yes. Wait, we're I can driving? Ask. Yes, yes. We're we're driving in a painted, Jack Poet painted Volkswagen Swagger. before they were psychedelically uh, painted Before they were uh, yeah. stolen away from us because Jack unfortunately nearly went to jail over the whole thing. And we got dehorsed. were all re repossessed. Yeah. Another whole story. Unhor unhor another story. Another story. Un unhorsed. <laughs> but before that happened. We're right. driving back from the studio. We're writing Dwarf. We're trying to write a movie. We're thinking about movies for the first time. And I vaguely remember being in the back seat. And I remember David saying, don't yeah. crush that dwarf hand me Yeah, he said, yeah, was, he said, Sam David said something. I remember it being on the, the, the trip out to playing in Tahunga. That's, I just have oh. a different... Do we tell that story? Oh, no. did we already tell that story in the next interview? No, no, I don't think so. But <laughs> Well, in any case, it, we were talking about it, and David said, well, you know, something like, don't crush that dwarf, hand me the pliers. Yeah, but I remember Hold it. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody write that down. I, I remember that, the, I think it was inspired by a, a piece of sheet music, which was something like, crush that, that dwarf hun. <laughs> I tell you. So I can't answer that except that one popped out of my mouth. Here's yeah. here's what I first heard. Uh, first heard. How could you be? Peter and I are standing in the in the uh, kitchen. Uh, uh, no, we're in the back. We're waiting to go on stage in Tahunga at this theater. Was this the Fahrenheit 451? We're playing oh, yeah. the Fahrenheit 451. Sunland to Hunga, that's right. Uh, yeah. I'll tell Wait, that Wait, just quickly. Yeah. On the marquee, I mean, <laughs> on, on the yeah. outside, it said, Fire Sign Theater, next week, marquee chimps. <laughs> <laughs> there was nobody in the audience. Yeah. You would have been a big crowd. No, it, it, was, it was playing Fahrenheit 451. Yeah. We were, and, and we were the, so we played the first in front of it was the second billy. The last vaudeville act. And we yeah. changed in a barbershop down the street. Next Remember door. Next door. Barbershop door. Next door. So Peter and I are standing backstage, oh, good okay, not backstage, but in the aisle way, you yeah, know, next to the stage, stage. The theater. and Peter said, you know, uh, I think we ought to call the next album, uh, how could you be in two places at once when you're not anywhere at all, and I said, Peter, we got to go on, it's too long. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, that, it came to me, and Phil Proctor was renting a house in Encino. When that came to me originally, I was standing at the, in the middle of the kitchen doing something, and it just Be came kitchen. out. I sang it. And then I mentioned it yeah. to you. Yeah. Waiting for the electrician. That's, yeah. I, was in, I was in, before the fire sign began, when I was in Europe, I was on a Ford Foundation um, artistic fellowship sort of thing. And after that, I went to... Amsterdam, and Amsterdam was really interesting then. It was, uh, oh, this is very interesting. LSD thing. was being... Yeah, was legal, and it was just beginning to... Uh, disseminated. Yeah, yeah, you know, it was just, it was a crazy, crazy time. And very, very naive and, and interesting. And I'm sitting on the roof uh, with some friends at night, look, watching the canals or something like that, and I had written a, a, a movie, or a, a title for a movie called Waiting for the Electrician, and it was going to be taking place with people just lighting matches and talking to each other. I was a bit avant-garde at the time. <laughs> It was an awful idea, but it was just, a, but it was just an idea. Right. And there was this guy, Robbie, that was a friend, and I said, he said I've got this thing, thing I'm writing, uh, waiting for the electrician. And this Dutchman says, or someone like him. <laughs> and I brought that title with me from Europe. Yeah, that, wow. was, that was straight off of that. Yeah, we had the title before we wrote a word right. of the album. That's we right. knew we were going yeah. to write a piece called Waiting for the Electrician or someone like that. And that's where we got old Holy Grid and all that yep. stuff we went Oh, we did do that improvisation in the student union at UCLA, at UCLA. UCLA based on that title where we, we pretended that we were um, a, um, the Bulgarian, an expatriate. The Bulgarian National Orchestra in Exile. In Exile. <laughs> That's how we appeared. And we didn't speak English. No, so we, did, we did this presentation in mime. 
dressed in black. I, 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 yeah, 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 the last yeah, time. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What at at Bozos? Remember oh, what Bozo's, we first Bozo's. called Bozos? Uh, we'll, we'll be Hieronymus Bosch in a moment, but Faust. But Faust, no. <laughs> then there was, no, it was the death, the death and transmogrification oh, of St. Bipo, the macrocephalic clone. Oh, you're right. <laughs> That's right. Saint the one, one of the macrocephalic uh, dwarf, What dwarf was supposed to be. We'll be Hieronymus Bosch. Hieronymus Bosch. Just on Faust. That's right. Bozo's, Too cute. Bozo's is the first one where we actually just, uh, we, it came out of a character's mouth first, and then yeah. we, we made it. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're all Bozo's little yeah. buses. Yeah. That's, right. that's right. Yeah. It, yeah. And, and then and designing yeah. Bozo's as being berserkers. Uh, B, oh, what was B -O Beaners. Beaners. Berserk. Oh, B-O. Oh, I don't know what the O was. Zip, oh, boogies. Boogies. Be Boogies, no. beaners, beaners, boogies, zips, zips boogies. berserkers. Beaners, others. boogies, zips, zips berserkers. Like <laughs> Still works. Still works. Beaners. Well, what was interesting about it is my roommate and I were trying to figure out after listening to at least two, maybe three of your albums, what the title had to do with anything that was in the album itself, and we never could figure it out. So now well, we know why. It, well, yeah, that's that's exactly why. However, the conventional explanation of uh, "Don't Crush That Dwarf" is actually "Hand Me the Pliers." Is actually uh, our uh, the guy who lived behind us, David Grimm, yeah. who did the music for Nick Danger and uh, died so shortly thereafter yeah, at 30 time. years of age, uh, or he'd likely still be with us. Yes. Sure. Uh, um, he, uh, it, um, wait a minute, I lost my track. Oh, you were talking about the origin the, of Bozo? Uh, uh, no, pardon me, of, of Don't Crush That Dwarf? Don't Crush That Dwarf. Well, whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's a long time ago. David Grimm. <laughs> what did you David Grimm. Grimm. I know he accompanied Nick Danger. Yeah, but you know, remember, it was very common, common in the early to, rock and roll days how can you be? to have non-sequitur titles for albums. Oh, yeah. We weren't the only oh, one. There were a lot of, you know, I mean, what's Anthem to the Sun mean? I mean, you know, oh, is there a cut on that album called Anthem to the Sun? I don't, to think. The I don't think there's any cuts on it. You know, the Grateful Dead has only played one song. <laughs> <laughs> and all, these, all these things, you know, uh, uh, Waiting for Electrician, uh, How Can You Be?, uh, they are, they're thematic to the albums. They really are. Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, how, well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. That's, that's exactly what I'm saying. Grimm had a television set, black and white, you know, television yeah. set, with no tuning knob like many people did. He had a pair of pliers on top of the television, <laughs> which he changed. Which he, don't crush that dwarf, my friend. Yeah. And be the little pliers. I can change my way. That's standard bureaucrats. Also, once we came up, once we came up with the title, or come up with these titles, we would start to, to to think in various ways about what it what it meant. Well, what does this mean? Yeah. And and one of the things was that we heard that they hired little people to work inside the wings of planes during the Second World War, so they could put rivets in the planes. Much so, in other words, utilize. You know, people who are different from we are and smaller we are. Uh, it was another justification for that. But but the the reason that Nick <laughs> <laughs> those very those very dwarves right that worked inside the mm -hmm. the, the fuselages and the wings were at in Boeing and Lockheed, half of them were the Munchkin became That's the right. Munchkins in uh, oh, and the other half right. joined a sex circus. That's true. That was, That's true. Was there Sex Circus, The Wizard of Oz, or Help the War Effort? That's basically yeah. kind of the 40s to me. <laughs> the, most, the most obvious thing on Don't Crush That Dwarf is I'm sure everybody just figured it was a pot joke. That you were. Oh, I never thought. Oh, yeah, the pliers. Oh, I got crushed that door. Hand me the pliers. Hand me the whole. See? Well, that's right, because we used to use. Give us that. Yeah, which reminds me, I just want to mention this, which is. We were talking about this yesterday. There was a large group of people that still believe to this day that the Firesign Theater got stoned and went into the studio and improvised the album. Did we did that? Yeah. You mean we did? <laughs> we did. Really? There were people that said, "Yeah, you guys were so stoned. You just went in there and had a great time, made those albums." I said they were scripted. No, I said we worked weeks, you know, hundreds of hours. Months. Of script. Oh, months. God. You know, it's no. You just went in there and got high. And I said, yeah. It took about six about six weeks. Four hours it, it a was week it was a do. great technique because we could write well, since we had really uh, under this wonderful contract that John no what's his name set up for us no uh, no originally spoke, that was uh, spoken arts contract yeah but we, we got that originally through Gary Usher they just thought we were a theater group. oh okay so they gave us a, a soundtrack uh, album contract where there's no cost for us yeah so we could write 
go into the studio, lay some stuff down. We didn't. We may, might not have even finished the album, right. and then go back and, and inspired by what we had done and what we heard, what we you know what was beginning to take shape. We could write some more. It was a wonderful process. Yeah. But but I do want to mention, and, and how can you be in two places at once? You're not aware at all. Which is like when you're talking on the radio, and you know you're somebody's listening to you, and you're really just in the airwaves. That's what it always meant to me. Uh, or even the records, you know, the same thing. Uh, Nick Danger is on that record because we were fired from a, a radio show that we were doing. They changed the format to, I think, uh, uh, country and western, rabbinical country western. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and right. so, Lubitsch, yeah. and we were going to do Nick Danger, Lubitsch, hip hop, yeah. <laughs> so it ended up on the on the record instead. You know, oh my God! So, but but it was great to, at that time to be able to have these outlets. To yeah, we were going to do a show and it was called uh, um, God. I guess it was just the Fireside Theater show, but the inside show was called um, Twenty Three Skid Row. Yeah, but yeah. That's right. There was the four of us. We lived at Twenty Three Skid Row. It was like a. It was like uh, you know. A, 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 um, that kind of show where you know somebody knocks on your door yeah. and they come and visit you. Right. And it was that, Alan's Alley, the Alan's Alley sort of show. But out of, and then in the in the middle of that, we decided to write this thing called Dick Danger. And we were going to do it in this big Masonic, not yeah. Elks oh, Hall's gorgeous Elks Hall. place. Oh. We had it all set we up, and they just changed the format. Oh my know, god. I, you know, there is there is a big uh, Lubavitch uh, uh, DJ in LA. What's it called Circle uh, K, Cir K in a Circle? Isn't that what his name is? Oh, he's yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 in a Circle. Yeah. Right. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, okay. Uh, Anything else? Yeah. Well, are, are you? Oh, go ahead. I was just wondering if you had other names before the four of you agreed on Fireside. Mm. No, 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 no. I named him. <clears throat> he, he, we, before <laughs> we walked David. into the studio, <laughs> before the four of us walked into the studio together, Peter said, Do you mind if I call you the, the Oz Fire Sign Theater? Yeah, we looked at each other and said, Okay. Well, Fire Signs. Yeah, exactly. Fun. We couldn't use Oz because uh, uh, Walt Disney uh, had the rights to the Oz stories to do Return to Oz or something. And so they sent us a, you know. No, they called color. me. They, they called they me on the phone. They said, I have a so and so from Disney, and you can't use Oz as part of your name because we own it. And I said, okay, are you the Disney company? And I said, yeah. I said, well, we're the Fire Sign Theater, and we own the. <laughs> <laughs> And they had a lot more money and, and <laughs> <laughs> it was a good thing too, with Oz fire Yeah, even yeah. more confusing than it is for people anyway. Right? So it's true all through all of you are far signs? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're so far so we're farce signs, I think. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, an Aries, a Leo, and two Sagittarius in the season. Yes. <laughs> Left leg, right leg. Right. Yeah. Yes. So um any plans uh for no. high school literature <laughs> class study guides to compete with Wuthering Heights? And, uh, yes, we do. Yeah. Yeah. We are going to publish <laughs> Fire Sign Theater play, radio plays and one acts mm -hmm. so that people will be able to do it. And we're going to publish the full script to anything you want to, the entire play. So, yes, we are going to get out there and make ourselves available, make our stuff available. Yeah, the, uh, the, the actual <coughs> script of uh, anything you want to. Uh, has uh, I think eleven appendices, an extremely long introduction, and about a thousand notes. Yes, yep. and so the entire text is double what you'll ever hear on stage. On, on stage, or that you would ever want. Oh, want it. Yeah. <laughs> would you, we keep trying to work out how to work the uh, the critics yes, into this. Critics We're still it. trying to work the work that part We've out. We've actually moved a step closer because our our the man who produced uh, the Dear Friends album and and the series of shows, Bill McIntyre, is back working with us, particularly working oh. with Peter. He lives down in Dunsmuir. Uh, shall we tell the story, Pete? Go ahead, yes, please. I'll start. Yeah. Okay, Bill, Only this only happened maybe a month ago or so. A uh, new guy moved into the trailer court where Bill works. Bill's a videographer. New guy, seems like a great guy. Everybody in this trailer court tends to have an odd story. This guy's odd story was, of course, that he had been captured by aliens at one point or another, dead serious. Yeah, oh, right. that's a great story. Uh, Bill goes on and on, uh, avoiding the guy, basically. And then one day, Pete, 
Well, one day, uh, you know, Bill had been saying to him, well, I'll tell you a story. I'm a videographer. I can put you on tape. The guy comes walking up and, and, and Bill says, this is the time. We're going to do it, right? He said, yeah. And the guy started to wheeze and died of a heart attack in front of what? him. What? Oh. Fell right down, oh. died of a heart attack within a minute. Bill <laughs> said, wait, I'll get my camera. I'll and get my camera. Going, oh, great. Oh, God. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> so, the aliens the so the aliens blew up the chip oh, in his yeah. brain. Oh, oh, Someone had put a chip up his ass. True story. <laughs> Just because you're paranoid doesn't mean that somebody is not to get you. Why are we talking about this? I don't know, but no, I keep no, it to myself. <laughs> I had the Fire Sign Theater's Big Mystery Joke Book, which was given to my blind, given to me as a gift by my blind friend Hillary, who turned me on to you guys. Mm -hmm. And my husband, we're going to bring it with us, and I had it down in the kitchen. He moved it upstairs because he was afraid it would spill coffee on it. And I've had this thing since like 1976. It's not going to go anywhere, and it's you know. So I, I didn't get a chance to bring that, and that's my regret. So I have to come back up and do the Kirkland shows with you hey, guys. Hey, there you go. Oh, okay. But we also this is the one thing that my friend yeah. Hillary and I listen to your albums repeatedly, looking for those hidden messages, like all side A's in a row, and then all side B's in a row. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! I think it was improvised. Huh? <laughs> I mean, we would sit there with the turntable and backwards track and stuff like that. And it's like, you know, it's like, you know, Phil dead. No, you know. Right. Like, you can't get that quality stuff anymore. It's really true. We did all this crazy stuff with the records, looking for all these hidden meanings. Yeah, a lot of people. And is there a continuous a story people. on all the well, sides? There is. There, yeah, well, there finally there was, is. but there couldn't have been before we started it, because we didn't know we were going to do, we no, almost didn't do a second record. No. It was John McClure. That's it. John so McClure went saved and our said, lives you gotta, in Columbia. you got to keep these guys on so the label. So we were label. right in, you know, I was a small child, and he was What's like the, Were you... Yes, it evolved into a story. It's yeah. really the Odyssey, like every other yeah. male it's story. Kind of like trans, story. Um, you know. <laughs> and, but I remember more than once the four of us would sit around the table and a line would come out and we would say, wait till they hear this. Yeah. Wait yeah. till they hear this. Because there were yeah. secret messages. You don't understand now anything that Bob Dylan is talking about. But at the time, <laughs> everything was a secret message. Watch your parking meters. Watch your parking meters. Yeah. Yeah. Punk yeah. does work Such as a battle stole the hands. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That was all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. And and the Beatles were full of secret. Peter did the... Oh, the, the, <laughs> the, uh, uh, the astrological rubber soul. Oh, that was one of my favorite thing. things that was Peter ever was? did on radio. This is what he did was on radio for you. Yeah, yeah, because I recall Yeah, that. there were 12 cuts on the album. Yeah, right? on the American album. American album, and I signed uh, an astrological uh, Aries through, you know, to each one of them, explaining, of course, that each one had all of the attributes of uh, the astrological sign. It, it embarrasses me. <laughs> 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 Let me just insert something. Yes. I, I was the producer of Radio Free Arms, right. and our biggest problem was filling time, and that filled a hell of a lot. And we used to read tarot over the air. Oh, you three, used to read three tarot. Card, yeah, three yeah. card tarot. Yeah, you yeah, produced it. Yeah. You let it on the air. <laughs> People call up and I do three cards, uh, your past, your present, and your, your future at your, at your present level of all. Present level of woman's <coughs> desire. That was the thing. I asked the president. I'd well, him down and I'd read him and people, you'd hear their pants dropping. You know, they were just like, <laughs> also, how did you know? I think. <laughs> <laughs> Radio Free Oz was, I think, also responsible for Robbie Shankar's great success in America because very often oh, no. they just put on a raga that would go on for a half an hour. And leave. <laughs> it's the last you part of the show. show. Goodbye. Get on the motorcycle and get the hell out of yeah, there. I mean, you have to be on the inner for three and four hours at yeah, a time. Five was days a week. Nightmare. Was it, what, oh. what, was it 10 to or something? I don't know. It, was, it, was, it ended up being forever. from 10 to 1. 10 to 1. Five nights a week. Yeah. Peter and I wound up living at what was that restaurant down the way? The, the, oh, I forgot God. what it was. Our neighbors, yeah, not part of Baggies, wasn't it? Right, no. 
<laughs> I mean, we were we, we put so much time in, and we loved it. I mean, it wasn't like, oh my God, this is so hard. This was like, you know, oh my God, we're on the radio. Yeah. yeah. And and we just took it for granted, right? It was the it was where we were, it's what we were doing, and uh, we yeah. felt like we were inventing something because when when all of a sudden then when we also had a recording contract, which yeah. we all remember was like what like God had appeared to you if you had a yeah. recording contract. Yeah. We had one. And uh, and we were we, our competition was Bill Cosby or Bob Newhart yeah. right, or right. George Carlin George Carlin George, Carl. George Carlin even just barely started barely, barely. Just barely started right and they we nobody Nichols and May I Smothers Nichols and May were as, as hip as you got and Switch and the Beyond the Fringe guys and yeah. uh, the Englishmen. But we were the first people we thought that were going to make these big long stories, and we didn't do it until our second album. Really, did we try to make a story that that's right? Two first sides album was more episodic with one. Although one a, a, electrician, electrician was a long story. That's a whole one side. That was pretty odd. Right, right. But one side when we it was when we went to album number two and tried to connect the two sides. Yeah, three that we guess. Well, yeah. Well, three it does connect yeah, because yeah. Uh, there on the other side they're speaking well, Chinese. Well, for the first time, they, yes, we made we went through the hole. The hole in the middle of the sure, LP the was a very important yes. thing to us. And at that point, we were. It was. Us. It was. How do you get to the other yeah. side of the record? It's complicated. <laughs> you got to go through the whole black hole. And this was far, far away from whatever Bill Cosby was doing. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and you know something? You know something? Nobody. What's always amazed me is that. No one's ever picked it up. It's not like then, then the fire sign and then they're pro, they produced. Right. Well, they say we're an influence, but there's no other group like the fire sign turning out no. material like ours. Yeah. And one yeah, of the reasons I think form. is that the way we're organized, uh, nobody else has ever put four people together all equally sharing. You know, no manager, no real contract, a real kind of creative anarchy, and it's cost us. You know, dearly sometimes. Yeah, but right. but sure. what we get out of it is the fact we're we're 43 years along, and here we are. Yeah. You know, and that's that's pretty rare. You, you know, I think the only person who has who ha inspired by what we did, who has done long form, is Roger Gregg, uh, the Crazy Dog Audio, which you're probably not that well acquainted with. Really over in Ireland. Uh -huh. And, and he, he created, I think David. He's an, know a, an American who went to, uh, where, where, where he could do he's it. From Detroit, which was and he's in Ireland, he, and he does stuff. He did stuff on the radio for many years, but he also, it turned out some wonderful adventures that were on long form. Still not as surrealistic as our stuff. And all by himself. I mean, well, he wrote yeah, it by he, himself. He wrote it by himself, and he. Did we had the music to agree and, every line in those uh, original classic uh, pieces. Every, every word. Every word we had to <laughs> agree on. <laughs> every one person <laughs> held out. It didn't get in, and they were. It was always better on what we finally agreed on. You know? But what was also interesting, I mean, the aspect of improvisation that that happened was that we would we would spend you know days sometimes at a sticking point arguing about either where it was going to go or. Turn a phrase or something, and it was exhausting and frustrating. But we also kind of honored it because we knew that we were like the witches in the, you know, <laughs> making the brew, you know, throwing in the. the uh, beak, beak. You know, I thought of this the other day. It, 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 there was a, an almost religious acceptance of something called being in a group. Yeah, mm -hmm. the fellowship. It was the band. It, it Mindless it fellowship. With, we call it at one point. Remember? Well, no, I mean. Uh, that's more mass religion to meet mindless fellowship. Yeah. What I'm talking about is the fact that there was the secret messages were being passed by people as commercial as the Beatles and yeah. and the Rolling Stones and all these people that we all like you were playing in our minds at least trying to look for connections. We were all mm -hmm. desperately trying to look for connections. As I mentioned before, we were scared shitless. Yeah, and uh, and we got to play with that, I think, more than any other artists of that era. I, I don't think anybody yeah. got to do what we actually nope. got to do. And the way we did it was by honoring this weird idea of a group. That a group to us mm -hmm. was something that where there was no leader. That, and we, it, it's like Kat's question about, about power. Our idea was that there was no power over us. Mm -hmm. That our power was only in getting in, in, in agreeing on something among the four of us. And there was never <coughs> anybody, true. there's been periods of time where one or the other of us has taken the lead on something or this and that. That has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. It all gets down to the fact that if it's gonna be called Fire Sand Theater, 
it's every word has gone through all four of these heads, and we all have the right of veto. Each one of us has the right of veto. And we exercise it a lot. Yeah. But what, what I wanted to say also about it was that we sometimes have these, these long discussions and everything. Finally, we agree on what we're going to take in. And then we go into the <laughs> studio, <laughs> and something else would happen between us, and all that agonizing work would just go out the window, apparently. But of course it wasn't. It was just like laying a groundwork. It was like a blueprint for the for the work that came out of it. Since we were all so we we, we were concentrating so hard together, you know, towards a, a comedic goal. It and, was, and, it was because, amazing and because process. of this odd recording contract we had, in which they never had to pay us any money really for anything, we got unlimited studio time. So right. when we were in the studio doing this, we could just stop. The engineers would yeah. would stand there and, uh, for hours yeah. as we continued the writing process in these expensive studios with Jack with, Benny's studio. Yeah, studio Jack B. Benny. Yeah, we the, we with were working Andy, in the original with, Columbia with studio. Andy yeah. Williams, who is in fact this tall. That's that big. <laughs> He's that got smaller. He's gotten older too. Been, been older yeah. a little bit now. Yeah, we were in the part of that whole change. We started with Andy Williams, right? And soon we were scraping Moby Grape off the floor <laughs> of the studio, or standing in the or glass and, walk, yeah. and, and watching uh, the birds. Yeah. You know, they do. They do. Uh, you know, uh, what it was. Rosemary and Thyme, or something like that, and then we'd come in and do our stuff. Same Chad studio. and Jeremy. Chad and Jeremy. We did yeah. some stuff more. So we were right in the middle of those studios. It was great. Another part of our Phil process, off, Mike Oaks. Another part of our process that made it so fresh was that we'd do takes, and the take might not be perfect, but we liked it so much we left in the flaws. Yes. There'd be times when we'd, there, but if you listen to it carefully, it, it all seems right now, but sometimes we do a, a three minute take and just love it, and there'd be somebody saying, no, leave it, leave yeah. it, we're never gonna get better. There's, so, here, here's an example of a moment that's so small, probably only Phil and I know what it is. That when Phil was doing the sound effects for Nick Danger, he's, he's doing the physical movement in the studio for Nick's voice. And, and Nick is walking into a place and it's shivery. What's your line? It, it's oh, instead of the cold marble floor? floor. Yeah. Said, yeah, cold mar marble floor. Oh, and he cannot resist going, hoo! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he did it last night. And, which he does every, every time in the same <laughs> spot. And that's an ad lib from that performance. It just is but, so funny. But you know where we, where we, 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 we really uh, started playing with those techniques is when we were doing live radio. Yeah. yeah. And, and we worked with a guy named the Live Earl Jive who was, was a very mischievous uh, uh, technician, sound technician, producer, and he would drop in sound effects and, and music and things in the middle of something that we were doing. In our earphones. Yeah, all of a sudden a plane was coming and by and we'd respond to it. And we'd respond to it. And it would take us sometimes in an entirely different direction. You know, it, it was a musical jazz improv type thing, somebody do a riff, you know. Uh, I'm telling you, those shows were such an interesting loosey-goosey a uh, combination of loosey goosey and prepared material that you know that, that we, we brought in a lot of risk. A lot of risk. Free, go free, in free. To totally not free, knowing free, what we free. were going to do for an hour. Yeah. Lights on. A go. theme would, would come sometimes. Remember, I, I remember we'd get together a little bit before the show and some theme would emerge and we'd go like, okay. <laughs> and if you look at Cheese Log Wars. Cheese, remember that? Cheese Log Wars. Because somebody said yeah, Cheese Log Wars. So Cheese Log Wars. Okay. The Terrence Hinton Show. Why not? The uh, there's, what was the Olympics? Was the, the Sex Olympics that we did? The, it was, it was the, winter, the, winter, the Winter Mud Olympics. Winter we did Mud Olympics. Winter Mud Olympics. Yeah, yes. something would emerge and that would become. No, the, you know, that, that, came, that was Earl Jive. He put on a march in the middle of something. Yes, that's right. And here they come. Yeah. Those are the Hungarian underage sex Olympic team. Yes. <laughs> but you know something, and, and Taylor and, and our friend Richard Metzger, who is a real good mind and has listened to all this stuff also, his expert said, of those 72 hours, he said, of the whole thing, there's only two references I don't get. He said, it's completely huh. green. He, he didn't know who Ferdy Grofe was, or he oh, did, but really? he didn't think other people would. This is a guy in his 40s. Yeah. Yeah. He, no, he, he knew who he was, but he said, I don't think they'll know who Ferdy Grofe is and George Matetsky. And I said, George, George Matesky, the mad bomber. Mad I said, well, but he said, it's completely fresh. There's nothing dated in the 70 hours or 72 Amazing. hours. And I, I, you can, you can find out about Richard Mesker if you go to Dangerous Minds. He's, oh, it's wonderful. Right. wonderful. He did, he's we're a, up there. Great interview. Big interview, interview with us. Wonderful there's, interview. There, there's a little of just on, in terms of the, uh, the ad living. They, um, the, our engineer, when we recorded the last three albums we did for a Rhino, uh, recorded our rehearsals. 
And so I haven't listened to many of these, but there is really is a Fred? Oh, one Fred, yeah. Fred. The late uh, Fred no, Jones. No, 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 no. We were Bob at, Wayne. at Bob Wayne's. Oh, yes, Bob yeah. Wayne, yes. So you can hear uh, there, a particularly good one is our farewells from... Um, yes. Immortality. It, it, yes. Give me immortality or give me yes. death. These, that, those farewells, we go in with a script, oh, and in yeah. 15 minutes you hear us evolve these things that we've individually yep. come in with yep, yep, yep. and say, oh, no, that, you should say that, Peter. No, why don't mm -hmm. we put those... Mm -hmm. Not drop that. You know, and this for 15 minutes, builds, this conversation builds, it builds. for a one minute piece that comes out. And then you hear the finished piece. Magic at the end. It's true. I mean, if you look at some of those scripts, <laughs> I don't even know how. It was like they look like they're written in Chinese by the time we're finished because they're so they're so overwritten. I don't. Uh, I mean, written over. They were certainly not overwritten. They were written over. <laughs> Fine line, Joe. Speaking of studio stuff, uh, a couple of things. Uh, the quad mixes of, uh, I think it's Bozos and every, everything, yes. are those ever possibly maybe seen a live of day again? They're I know done as, as eight track. Uh, as, as eight track. track. <laughs> the quad I, I think I, I think I can tell this audience. Um, if a DVD uh, comes to fruition for uh, that would include everything you know is wrong, uh, if you have a 5.1 system at home, look for an Easter egg. Oh, okay. Uh, oh. And Bozos, do we have the four? Do we have the uh, surround, the four track? I have an I have an eight track of I, everything. I have it, but I but I mean I we mixed it at Warner Brothers Studios as a you know. Boy, was that fun! Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I have a question about your scripts. Um, is there any possibility that you might? Publish them someday, like the big mystery joke book. Although, Peter touched upon this. I mean, I think yeah. that that would be. No, the the intent is to is to do that, but not to that you know those thing? those two books were really artifacts of the '70s. Yeah, they really. And were. Uh, uh, and that's all very well and good. Uh, but They're what we want to do stuff. is to release the material so other people can perform In acting it. Editions. In acting yeah. editions. Yeah. Yeah. Which is Spring challenging time. because, you know, they weren't written as yeah. plays, yeah. per se. Yeah. We have to run yeah. yeah, I know, we, we do. Rapping? Yeah, we have to have a show tonight. Yeah, right. yeah we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this is it. <laughs> Isn't this it? <laughs> <laughs> Was it quarter after five? Yeah, it's quarter after five. Quarter after so. Here we go. Well, thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Special thanks to Robbie Cribbs at the Soundtrap Studios, Whidbey Island.